All right, guys, what's going on? Make sure if you haven't already, make sure you share, share, share all the content that I'm putting up. Make sure you like, 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 and make sure you definitely donate to my Cash App. One of these signs, string a bell, 80. It's right below. You'll find it in the description box. Okay, guys, I've got something that's interesting that I was kind of amazed that a lot of people weren't talking about, and this is what I'm talking about right here. If many of you guys don't know, there's a guy in New York City that was just recently, just recently, as of yesterday, convicted to a life term. This man's name is Chanel Lewis. And what surprises me more enough about anything is there's no one really talking about Chanel Lewis. He's a young African-American man who clearly, clearly is mentally disturbed. This is not off my own precedence. This is not off of my own observation. This is off the observation of many people that have come in contact with Chanel Lewis. All right, now, the person in question that was murdered was a young woman. Her name was Karina Patrona. All right, she's an Italian woman. She's from Howard Beach. If you guys are not familiar with Howard Beach, look it up on Google Maps here in New York City. Now, this is the thing that's weird about this whole situation, right? Chanel is being accused of a murder, and he's now been convicted of this murder. But what there are so many inconsistencies with this case that I just have to bring them up. Now, I don't want anybody to take this video like I'm picking sides or I'm saying this or I'm a snoop. I don't want to do the same thing that everybody else on YouTube does. That's not, that's not what I do. But what I do want to do is present some of the facts that may be, well, questioning whether or not this young man is guilty. Now, this girl, Karina Vitrona, was out jogging. And she was out jogging in the path at Howard Beach. And it was nighttime. The path she was jogging on was dark. Eh. Subsequently, she was murdered at some times. Um, I don't know when, I don't know how, but she was murdered. Six months passed, they didn't find a suspect. Now, the person to find Karina is her father. Her father claims that he went out later on that night and he went looking for her on this dark path and he found her. Which also seems kind of odd. Well, six months passed and they didn't find a suspect whatsoever. And all of a sudden, what led them to find Chanel Lewis was this. Somebody remembered a 911 call to dispatch saying that they saw a suspicious young black man. A suspicious young black man moving around. Kind of kind of eerie and reminiscent of, um, I don't know, George Zimmerman and that whole deal. Really so. But, needless to say... It led them, not even a month later, to Chanel Lewis's arrest. Now, Chanel Lewis was interrogated at this time. He was brought into the DA's office and charged and booked or whatever. But during his interrogation, there was a whole six hours that passed. A whole six hours now. Lock that in. A whole six hours that passed. Because during these, these, these interrogations, they're all recorded. Now, there was a whole six hours that passed that Chanel didn't appear on the videotape, nor was he being interviewed any longer. Which leads to this. A lot of people are saying, including a lot of people in law enforcement, that this may have possibly been a forced cohesion of facts. Now, I'm going to say this, and this is where I'm going to step in. We've all seen this happen before. We know the stories that this happened before. We've actually had people that have been exonerated for situations that have happened like this before. Where somebody comes in and gives their testimony, or someone takes the need and says they're calling in because they see somebody suspicious and black. And they follow through and arrest people, interrogate them, and sometimes they come up with nothing. And then a lot of times they come up with a conviction that's false. If you need an example of that, there was uh, just not too long ago, I remember there was a the guy from the Central Park, the Central Park Joggers. And if you guys are not familiar with that, the Central Park Joggers situation was the same thing. These guys went to jail for years, and they were convinced that these guys did this, and they didn't do it. These guys were later exonerated, these guys were later laid out of prison, and so on and so forth. This story goes even further. One of the things that kind of surprised me was how so many people in the courtroom, when the first time they had convicted them, yes, the first time they had convicted them, or thought they had a conviction, everybody was so distraught. Oh my God, I know he's done this, I know he's done this. Now, the jury locked, and the reason they locked is because they received a letter Yes, they received a letter to the courthouse or to the DA, one of the two, that was from a law enforcement agent that said he felt that the situation was coerced and that his testimony and his deposition in front of the DA under interrogation was actually forced. 
That led to a mistrial. Now, you fast forward, they come back, get whatever they're getting straight, and now they have a conviction. Upon this conviction, Chanel, Chanel Lewis just looked so distraught. But what was more surprising was how Karina Vetrano's family reacted in the courtroom. They all just applauded, yeah, like they just won a lottery or something. And I understand they lost a loved one, but this the outburst in the courtroom itself. Usually when you see things like that happen, you'll see a judge say, calm down. They were allowed just to go amok and do whatever they wanted to do. Now, as of two days ago, as I'm posting this, Chanel Lewis was sentenced to life. Now, Chanel Lewis's mother, including uh, several other people that are in politics here in New York City and a couple other people who have been involved in protesting in front of the city hall, in front of the courtroom, they've reached out to numerous news outlets. But the thing that disturbed me the most was I haven't seen one black blogger talking about this. I mean, the popular ones, the Tyreek Nasheeds, uh, the Boyce Watkins, you know, those guys. And I think it needs to be some light board onto this. I honestly and truthfully don't know if this young man is innocent, but I will say this. It's way too many inconsistencies in this story for there not to be something contrived there. And I'll run the facts to you again. Six months they didn't have a suspect. But all of a sudden they pull up a 911 tape talking about a suspicious man in the park at the same time Karina Vetrano was in the park. Prior to that, her father, her own father, subsequently found her dead body. And they found DNA evidence on the phone. They found DNA evidence under her fingernails and several other things, which leads me to believe this is too coincidental. Now, I don't know, like I said once again, if this, and for all I know, this guy may be guilty. But one thing I do know, and one thing I know that's been determined is, this young man has mental problems. And it's not the type of mental problems you would think of when you say he's violently, mentally disturbed. No, this man is emotionally, and, and, and I, I, I won't even say emotionally, I think he's, just, he's challenged. And I don't think he was just calculated. If this were my own, own repertoire. So, guys, if you don't know, check it to Chanel Lewis, his story. I'm going to be bringing some more stuff about him as I get it updated or whatever. But there's some possibilities. This guy may not be guilty. And I think some people should point that out. And if you're a black blogger, you should be on this. This is one of the things that you guys sit around and talk about all the time. Now, here's 